It's over six months, Robbie. It's starting to get to me. Been hard to wait for the trial. Yet. Thank God it won't be held in Thomas River. You know, at least I won't have a jury that's already decided I'm guilty. Where are they taking her? And down south, May's Landing. And these prosecutors, Robbie, they're just so full of it. You know, the only mistake I made, it's a gigantic mistake, was to call that guy from Louisiana to, to have him find out what happened to the missing casino money. That's all. Enough. I take all those toll calls to Shreveport. Would I have made toll calls on my business phone if I had anything to hide? It I doesn't know, make Dad. any sense. This guy LaRue, I didn't even know his real name. Now he's made up this cockamamie story. It's lies. It's all lies. You could bet your life he's made some deal with a prosecutor. You just saw a clip from the 1990 NBC miniseries Blind Faith. It is a miniseries based on the real life story of Robert Marshall, who was convicted of killing his wife in Ocean County, New Jersey. The story became a national story, and it was a big deal here back in 1984 when it happened. And we're talking about that today because Robert Marshall has died in prison one month before he may have been released. Eric Larson from the Asbury Park Press and also APP.com has been covering that story. Thanks for joining us, first of all. The most fascinating part of the story are the three sons who were left behind. Their father was in prison for the murder of their wife, of his wife, their mother gone. How did they, how do they feel about this? Well, the sons, their feelings are, are conflicted. Uh, they obviously lost their father. Uh, even the two eldest sons, which had fought so hard uh, to keep him in prison, um, th their emotions are mixed for the first... Let's stop for yeah. one second, because that was interesting. There's three sons. Right. Two of them, the two oldest, thought their father was a monster. That's correct. Wanted him to remain in prison for the rest of his life. The youngest son believed in him. That's correct. The youngest yeah. son, John. And it was the youngest son who was contacted that the father had died? Right. He, well, he, that's correct. He had remained in contact with his father all these years. Uh, he was 13 at the time that the murder had occurred. So he had, his loyalty had remained to his father, uh, despite obviously the grief he felt over his mother's loss and the facts of the case, which were overwhelming. And it's important to say that to the day that he died, the father, Robert Marshall, maintained his innocence. That's correct. That's correct. He, he, he considered himself complicit in her murder. Uh, but he did not uh, accept responsibility for it. And from your reporting, are you convinced that he did it? Yes, I am. But the youngest son is not? The youngest son is not convinced. Uh, although his, his, his older brother, Chris, the middle son, uh, who was the spokesman for the boys, um, had said that towards the end his youngest brother was conflicted. Um, or I should say the word he used was neutral. Well, I can't imagine going through something like that. You have to feel for the three sons. It, it, it's horrible to have your life ripped apart like that. Of course. The two oldest sons, are they upset that he never said I did it, that they never got a confession from him? One of the things that Chris Marshall had told me was that uh, they, he felt cheated that his father had gone to his grave without accepting responsibility. Um, not that it would have made any difference but that for them, it would, their lives were so disrupted. It was so, their lives were forever changed as a result of, of what their father had done uh, that uh, he would have liked to have at least heard his father accept responsibility for what he had done to their lives. Robert Marshall went to his grave without ever admitting that he had murdered his wife. Eric, thank you so thank you. much, and we'd love to have you back thank in you so some much. of your future stories. Eric Larson, APP reporter, and APP.com. You can read his stories there. We'll be right back.